official Stan YouTube channel. In this video, we will talk about hierarchical modeling using Stan. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to keep notified of the latest videos. Stan is a free software and its development is dependent on donations. If you could consider supporting Stan through a donation or purchasing some of our merchandise, then I'll put the link down below. Okay, so now back to hierarchical modeling. An important concept in hierarchical modeling is heterogeneity. So we already discussed heterogeneity in a previous video, modeling heteroscedasticity using Stan, which if you haven't seen yet, I would recommend you check it out. The video is here. Just to recap, heterogeneity is a measure of the variability in your data as opposed to the uniformity of your data, which is known as homogeneity. In modeling heteroscedasticity, the heterogeneity of variance, we were specifically looking at a continuous form of heterogeneity. Here, we will look at discrete heterogeneity, where the variation exists within the individual subsamples of a data set. As an example, we are going to be looking at the Premier League season 1920 football matches. The data consists of 20 teams and the goals scored over 328 matches. Each match has a home team and an away team, where a team playing in their home stadium will be at a slight advantage over the guest team. The number of goals scored by each team is assumed to be a Poisson distribution since the number of goals is a discrete probability distribution. Here, theta is the expected score. For the home team, theta 1 is the sum of the home advantage and the attack ability of the home team minus the defense ability of the away team. Also, since theta has to be positive, we take the exponent. For the away team, theta 2 is the same as theta 1, but without the home advantage. The data is heterogeneous. For example, the overall attack ability versus the defense ability of the entire league is not necessarily the same of each team. Some teams will be better at defense and some better at attack. Let's say that we ignore the heterogeneity and assume that all of the teams have the same performance. To do this, we could define a very narrow prior on the attack and defense abilities, such that they are all essentially the same value. The stand model looks like the following. In the data block, we define the number of teams and the number of games. These are both positive integers. We have integer arrays corresponding to the home and away team playing each match, and also the scores for each match, S1 and S2. These again are positive integers, and lastly, instead of fitting the model to all of the data, we will reserve the last few games to predict the scores. So we need to define the number of games that we will use for prediction and the corresponding home and away teams playing in those games. In the parameters block, we have the home advantage, which is a real number, and the vectors for the attack and defense abilities of each team. The performance rate can be defined by the parameters in the parameters block, so we write it in a transform parameters block. The home team performance rate, theta 1, and the away team performance rate, theta 2, are defined as vectors, with values for each game and calculated according to the equations that we defined earlier. In the model block, we define the priors on the parameters, the attack, defense, and the home advantage, which we assume to be a narrow Gaussian prior. Lastly, for the predictions, we can use a generated quantities block to calculate the expected score of each predicted match. To do so, we define the predicted rates of each match and the predicted scores, and then calculate the rates and the scores given the parameters for each match. Note here, the scores are equal to Poisson underscore RNG function of the rate. This is a random number generator from a Poisson distribution. To prepare the data, we convert the names of the home team in each match to an integer, and similarly for the away teams. We will save the last five games to use for predictions, and the rest will be used to fit the model. 
the data needs to be formatted in a list where we define the number of teams, the number of games, the home teams of each match, the away teams of each match, the scores of each match by the home team, the scores of each match for the away team, the number of prediction matches and the corresponding teams. The stand model takes just a few minutes to fit. Then to get the predicted games, we extract the parameters of the fit and calculate the means and standard deviations of the samples. Comparing these to the ground truth, we see that the model predicts the same number of goals for pretty much all of the teams and the matches. We can also calculate the measured means and standard deviations of the attack abilities and defense abilities of each team. The attack and defense ability of all the teams is close to zero. Alternatively, we could model the heterogeneity of the teams by assuming that each team's performance is independent of each other. And to do so, we would set very wide priors on the attack and defense abilities of each team. If we change the priors in the model and refit the stand model, then the predicted number of goals now looks like this completely different to the model using very narrow priors. The measured attack and defense abilities looks like this. Again, very different from before. Clearly, the predicted scores are sensitive to the chosen prior on the parameters. Alternatively, we could model the problem with a hierarchical model that interpolates between these two extremes. Hierarchical models sidestep the need to define a prior on the parameters. Instead, the parameters are assumed to be from the same population, which in this case is the distribution of the abilities of all of the teams in the league. The attack ability of each team is drawn from a Gaussian centered on the population attack ability of all the teams. And similarly, the defense ability is drawn from the population defense abilities. By combining the attacks and defense abilities across all of the teams in this way, we are maximizing the amount of information extracted. The parameters are essentially anchored towards the mean of the population. And the more teams that we have, the more certain we can be of how the population is distributed. We are not reliant on the priors of the parameters. Instead, they are sampled from the population. Nevertheless, we still need to define priors on the population parameters themselves, which are known as the hyperpriors and hyperparameters, respectively. Replacing the priors with this hierarchical model allows the parameters to be much more flexible, but also driven by the data. So the SAM model is modified as follows. In the parameters block, we add the hyperparameters, and in the model block, we define the hyperpriors and change the priors on the attack and defense abilities to now be drawn from the hyperparameters. The hierarchical model is less sensitive to priors. Changes to the hyperpriors will not affect the results by much. Have a play with them yourself. Now, if we plot the predicted scores made by the hierarchical model, note how the predictions are pulled towards the expectation of all the games. However, the amount of pooling is determined by the data itself. The predicted attack and defense abilities looks like this. You would expect the winning team of the Premier League to have the highest attack and defence. So here we see our model favours Manchester City, Liverpool, Leicester City and Manchester United. And the worst teams are Norwich City, AFC Bournemouth and Watford with very negative defence and attack abilities. 
Actually, the Premier League season 1920 is already finished with 380 matches. Remember, we have only used 328 games here, and five of these were used for predictions. In the end, Liverpool came out top of the league, and we were correct on four out of the top five. At the bottom of the league were Norwich City, Bournemouth and Watford. If we compare this back with the fully pooled model, we would have expected Liverpool to come out bottom of the league. So overall, I would say that the hierarchical model was a success. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll link the code, data and additional reading material below. Again, if you felt this was useful and would like to support Stan to continue making videos like this one, then please consider making a donation in the link below, giving us a like, a share or just subscribing.